Good morning, everyone. I'm not sure how many people I'm speaking to right now, but welcome to Dunray Gardens Virtual Open House. Uh, before we begin, I would like to introduce uh, who we have uh, with us in terms of our staff. So I have a few teachers uh, here uh, to support. So we have uh, Ms. Fabiana, who's uh, one of our Cycle 3 teachers. Uh, Ms. Iris, who... Good morning. <laughs> We have Miss Iris, who's one of our Cycle Bonjour. 1 teachers. We have Miss Chloe, one of our Cycle 2 teachers. Bonjour. And we have uh, Madame Amel, one of our Cycle 3 teachers. Bonjour. We also have a couple of parents with us. So we have uh, Anna Tsuluhas and Natalie Rabat. They're very active parents in our school. So welcome to both of you. Um, I don't see Natalie, but I guess she'll come in at uh, some point. Okay, uh, and we also have three students with us. So we have, we have Oscar, Eloise, and Max with us. So these are three grade six students and hopefully they'll give you a better idea of what their experience has been like at uh, Dunray Gardens. Uh, now I'm gonna just stop talking for a second and share with you a, a video that we've put together to hopefully give you an idea of what uh, our wonderful school has to offer. I'm a student in grade 6 and I know that the education I have received here at Dunray Gardens so far will prepare me for high school. At Dunray Gardens we have bright classrooms equipped with smart boards. We also use Chromebooks and iPads in our classes. I really like math because it's fun. Dunray Gardens is a very good school. My teachers help me learn a lot, uh, and I find that very important. J'aime notre programme de STEAM parce que ça nous donne beaucoup de chances de travailler en équipe avec nos amis, de compétences, et cela nous donne de la chance d'être créatifs. I love my teachers because they're nice and they make learning fun. For example, last year, we for STEAM, we took a pizza box and we turned it into a car and we had to motorize it. I love Dunray Gardens. My favorite subject is art. I like art because it lets me be creative. I like drawing and painting. Ce que j'aime le plus à Dunray Gardens est notre programme d'art. Nous avons la chance de la maternelle de voir les arts visuels ainsi que la musique. Moi aussi, j'aime le programme de musique parce que tu peux créer de la musique avec ton prof de musique et je suis dans le club Glee. gym class and as a cycle 3 student I'm looking forward to intramural. I love my teachers and I'm excited for planned competition against other schools. It's never boring in gym class. We are always learning new sports and games. My favorite sport is soccer. I love it when we get to make use out of our backfield to play. I love Dunray. 
At Dunway Garden, there is a lot of school spirit as we plan many themed activities. We have a wonderful community of parents who run a great DCA program. They offer many sports and activities such as basketball and karate. They get involved by planning many fun activities for us such as pancake breakfast, Halloween, and many others. So welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Um, so uh, now I'm going to speak to you just a little bit about our school. I'm going to share a PowerPoint presentation for you, but I know that the essence is uh, more the questions you might have for, uh, you know, the teachers, the parents who are here with us, who are a wealth of information as well, of our, as well as our students. So I'll try to make it brief. I'm just going to share my screen with you. So welcome to the uh, open house. Uh, our building has been, our school has been around for 90 years. We actually celebrated the last year, our 90th uh, year, and we've been offering an exceptional education to all our families and our community. Um, essentially, uh, we run a French immersion program where French is offered in K1 and 2. I'll discuss a little bit more the breakdown later but we want to make sure that we provide an environment that is nurturing and safe for our students. Uh, we're in the heart of the town of Mount Royal. We are a STEAM school, which I'll speak a little bit more about that later. And we do also offer language heritage courses. Last year, we offered Spanish, Italian, and uh, Greek. And this goes according to the needs of our clientele. We have about 350 students uh, right now. And like I mentioned before, we run a French immersion program. So this is what the breakdown looks in terms of the uh, uh, subjects that are offered. So in the kindergarten, it's solely in French. So we do immerse the kids in the French language. They come in not knowing how to speak French for the most part, but by December, January, the teacher is only communicating with them in French. So, uh, and then we have our um, cycle one, which the only class that is offered in, uh, in, in English is our ERC class. So all of the other courses, including the extra subjects that they have, uh, are offered in, um, in French. Uh, in psych and I'll let the teacher speak a little bit more about the, uh, uh, that, but I just wanted to discuss with you a little bit the breakdown. In cycles two and three, 59% of the classes are taught in French and you can see the breakdown here. And we have our ELA and our math, which is offered in English. Our schedule is uh, we're, a nine ten, we're a late start school, so we begin at 9, 10 until uh, 350. And we do offer daycare before and after school. So we can start as early as uh, seven o'clock until six o'clock. And even during, uh, we work very closely with our base program, uh, which is the daycare uh, program. And basically, you know, the kids can have a, a, a space to uh, do their homework, but they offer many different activities and uh, that they do with the kids during this time. So it's, uh, it's still also very educational. They spend a lot of time outdoors as well. They have time to uh, complete uh, assignments and so forth, but they do also get them very involved and they do a lot of arts and crafts with them and physical activity, even while they're in, uh, in daycare. Like I mentioned, we're a STEAM school. So you heard some of the, you saw some of the things that the kids were doing, building robots, programming, and they start as early as uh, even in grade one. 
um, so robotics uh, and so forth. And then many cross-curricular projects are done where different subject matters are intertwined together to create a larger project. Uh, in terms of our facilities, other than our inter the interior of our school, which we have our own classrooms for, we have a, a separate room for a library, our music room, our art, obviously our gymnasium, a science room, a maker space with a 3D printer, computer lab, and we do have a stage as well. Uh, other than that, we, since where we are located, we have the privilege of being surrounded by parks, tennis courts. We have an arena not very far from here where our kids have the opportunity to skate uh, during the winter time. Uh, we use the facilities around us and we have a very large green space. For example, even this year, uh, because of the restrictions with, um, uh, with COVID and so forth, we used our backfield to do our Terry Fox uh, run. So we do make very good use of the space around us. And then we do have other initiatives that we started in our school. We're constantly upgrading it and then we're also composting as well. We have a very involved uh, parental community who are all extremely supportive of the school. So they come up with these great ideas, run them by, uh, by myself or the administration. And um, they, they come up with really great things and they're always you know, uh, thinking of the children. They do wonderful fundraisers and the money is all uh, spent in the school. So they find, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, they, they're always asking us, what is the need of the school? So then they'll come up with wonderful ways to uh, bring people together. As you can see, there's a picture here of a uh, spaghettata. So this is the community eating at the sports rec. So there's a lot of things that are done to make sure that we bring our community together, but at the same time, raising funds for our students. We, they run also, uh, our parental community, a wonderful ECA program. So they offer courses such as karate, tennis, basketball, music. So there's uh, individual piano lessons that are offered, knitting. You see there's curling here. So there's a lot going on uh, even after school. Obviously this year is an exceptional year, uh, but uh, they run a very tight program and they run it really well. And there are many kids who end up participating and this is something that's done uh, after school. We do have a school uniform. So as you can see in the picture here, we, we have um, the, the navy blue trousers. We have a skirt uh, or uh, for the girls. We have a crested uh, shirt, which is new uh, this year. Uh, and we have an optional V-neck uh, school vest. So essentially the idea is to make sure that our, our uh, logo is visible. Um, and then we also have a mand mandatory phys ed uniform, which our students in the lower cycle, so in kindergarten, can wear their phys ed uniform all year round. And our cycle one, uh, grade one students can as well. And uh, we uh, and on phys ed days, kids can come in in their uniform. Uh, we do offer, we have a hot lunch provider, which is Miranda. And uh, they offer hot meals for our parents, so they order online, and they can uh, their children can end up uh, eating a hot lunch that is provided to them. So I'm going to share with you a video that was uh, that I recorded with my kindergarten teacher, which will give you a very good idea of um, what our kindergarten program looks like uh, during uh, centers. Bonjour, alors bienvenue à la maternelle des papillons à Gunway Gardens. Alors, cet après-midi, vous allez assister à des petits ateliers, c'est-à-dire que les enfants choisissent une activité dans un éventail proposé. C'est des activités plus libres qui développent l'initiative. Il y a des jeux pour développer la motricité fine, des casse-têtes, des jeux de logique mathématique, des jeux de société, de construction, des petits jeux iPad, de tangram, de mémoire, de logique. Et les enfants euh, varient de jour en jour et choisissent une activité selon leurs intérêts. Et puis moi, je les aide aux besoins. Alors, venez circuler, regardez ce qui se passe chez nos petits papillons. Oh là là, architecte, bravo. Tu vois, une Ça, de ce côté, bravo. Est-ce que fini le tambour? Est-ce que fini?
Est-ce que tu es capable de faire en anglais, en français? Yes, I can do that. In, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven. Bravo! Mm -hmm. Super! Alors, les, les enfants choisissent ici le matériel dont ils ont besoin pour les ateliers. Ils s'inscrivent d'abord sur mon petit tableau là-bas. Venez voir, venez voir. On laisse la place que Mme Miratus voit bien. Regardez, chaque activité est inscrite. Ici, on peut avoir jusqu'à deux enfants qui s'inscrivent, jusqu'à deux enfants. Ici, c'est un bricolage, tout le monde peut s'inscrire. Et chaque enfant a sa petite carte avec la couleur de son équipe et sa forme. Donc ça, c'est très clair. Il voit où il y a de la place puis il peut changer à tous les jours d'atelier. Donc, c'est vraiment ludique l'après-midi. Le matin, c'est plus structuré. On voit bien sûr les chiffres, l'alphabet. Euh, la maternelle, c'est une ouverture au monde. Alors, on chante, on danse, on bouge avec ou sans masque et euh, on s'amuse, on apprend à aimer l'école. C'est pour moi le but de la maternelle. Ça fait 32 ans que je fais ça. Mais en général, je pense que ça devrait être ça partout. Aimer l'école. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed that. It gives us a good idea of what happens in kindergarten in the afternoon during their centers. So now I'm going to have uh, Miss Iris speak to us a little bit about cycle one. Euh, bonjour, chers parents. Je m'appelle Iris Deldegan et je suis enseignante au premier cycle. Le premier cycle, c'est la première année et la deuxième année et je fais les deux. J'alterne souvent. Alors, je me fait grand plaisir de pouvoir vous expliquer un petit peu ce qui se passe euh, à ce niveau-là. Euh, vous avez la présentation PowerPoint devant vous et vous pouvez lire vous-même les grandes lignes principales de ce qui se passe dans notre programme d'immersion. Euh, comme vous pouvez le constater, c'est un programme assez chargé, mais riche en différents apprentissages. Si vous avez des questions par après la présentation, on fera un grand plaisir de pouvoir vous répondre. Tout d'abord, notre mission au cycle 1, c'est l'apprentissage du français. Le développement du langage, de la lecture et de l'écriture, ainsi que des concepts, l'apprentissage de plusieurs concepts mathématiques qui sont également enseigné en français. Euh, ceci est fait à travers des jeux, des activités ludiques amusantes et à travers la manipulation de plusieurs matériels éducatifs. Um, also, I wanted to share with you that through my many years of teaching at this level, I feel that you will notice the biggest change in your child's scholastic ability at this level. Cycle one is where your child will make sense of the letters, of syllables, and learn how to read in French. Nothing, nothing makes us prouder than when we see the twinkle, the sparkle, the joy, the sense of accomplishment in your children's eyes when they have their aha moment and they understand and they, the strategies on how to read and are able to read simple French sentences. It is so magical, it is so special, and we really celebrate that in our cycle. And we hope that you celebrate that at home because that is amazing. It's, an, it's very difficult to learn the French language. Um, you will also notice that your children will learn lots of new vocabulary, and we strongly encourage them to express themselves in French in the classroom. Um, and to reuse those words in the conversations in the classroom, because the whole idea for a French immersion program is that they're able to become more and more fluent as the years go by. Cycle one is the cycle we build a strong foundation for your child's success. With your much needed collaboration, we work as a team to try and instill the love of the French language, which is not an easy language to learn. I, we're very aware of that, but we will be able to instill and try and instill that love to them and also instill the skills needed you know, to move forward in a French setting, uh, immersion setting that we have here at Dunry Gardens. So, um, je vous remercie beaucoup d'être ici et de nous écouter et j'espère d'avoir le plaisir de voir votre enfant parmi nous. Merci beaucoup. 
Merci, Madame Iris. Euh, maintenant, je vais euh, demander à Madame Chloé de nous faire une petite présentation euh, pour le cycle 2. So, she'll discuss a little bit about cycle 2. Bonjour à tous, mon nom est Madame Chloé, Chloé Corrado. Donc, j'enseigne au cycle 2, je suis enseignante de français en quatrième année. Euh, je vais vous présenter un petit peu de ce qu'on fait au deuxième cycle. Je vais y aller en français et en anglais, donc j'espère que ça vous va. Um, donc, uh, cycle 2 begins in grade 3, and that's when the switch happens and students begin to learn in both French and English. Um, so, in French, they have the French class, obviously, as well as science and social studies, which are taught in French and they have English language arts and mathematics that are taught in English. Um, in French, we work on understanding and applying grammar um, through a lot of creative writing, and we also use a lot of youth literature. So we take a lot of books that we read, we pick apart, and then we do some activities where the students will write in the style of the author and often create something creative to go with it, something visual and artistic. Um, so we love to make those concepts come to life by using different books and different art mediums. Um, we also love to strengthen the different notions that are being taught um, through games and through centers. Um, you saw some centers in the kindergarten video, so a very similar feel where students get to try different things to strengthen the notions that they're learning. Pour les sciences et l'univers social, donc tous les deux sont enseignés en français. Euh, pour l'univers social, on touche à la Nouvelle-France. On fait beaucoup, beaucoup d'activités euh, interactives. On regarde beaucoup de, de vidéos pour pouvoir supporter ce qu'on est en train de d'apprendre. Il y a énormément de coopération aussi pour euh, l'univers social et pour les sciences. Beaucoup, beaucoup euh, d'activités avec lesquelles les, les élèves peuvent vraiment interagir avec euh, le matériel, surtout en sciences. Um, ensuite, for English language arts, uh, there's also a lot of creative writing, so a lot of journal writing so that our students can become confident writers to strengthen the grammar, especially because in grade three, um, they are starting to write and, and do uh, subjects in English. Um, we also do a lot of responding to literature, so doing reading responses, exploring different emotions and seeing how all of that um, plays into the books that we read and the way in which we interact with literature. And finally, in mathematics, um, we dive deeper into the operations that were lear uh, learned in cycle one. We do uh, multiplication, division, fractions, um, a lot of developing logic and critical thinking skills through situational problems. Um, Again, like in cycle one, we do a whole lot in cycle two, um, but the students certainly have a lot of fun as they're learning, and that's what is so, so great here at Dunray. Um, if you have any questions, I will be open to answering them at the end of the presentation, and I hope to have your child as a student at Dunray in one of these coming years. Thank you. Merci, Madame Chloé. Thank you so Merci. much. Et maintenant, je vais demander à Madame Amel et Miss Fabiana, qui sont deux, deux profs du cycle 3, pour nous parler un petit peu du cycle 3, le dernier cycle de, de l'école primaire. Good morning. Bonjour. All right, so I'll start with the ELA and mathematics in cycle 3. Um, I teach grade 5 currently, um, but I have done both in the past. Um, in English language arts, we focus on a balanced literacy program in which speaking, listening, viewing, writing, and production of media texts are learned and integrated. Um, we want to provide students with essential knowledge that will enable lifelong literacy and learning. Our main goal is the growth of critical and fluent speakers, listeners, readers, writers, and producers. And by doing that, we have um, many different activities that uh, go along with our writing program, our reading program, and, uh, and communication. We have uh, rich discussions that deepen thinking, uh, engagement, and comprehension. Uh, we engage and challenge students through real world news issues and ideas. Um, I'll move on with um, mathematics. In math, we have, uh, just like in cycle two, we have a situational, oh, um, excuse me, we have reasoning, which allows the students to work on strategies um, and communicate 
uh, their meaning and their understanding of math. Uh, we do that using manipulative, manipulatives and uh, through centers. We also have, and uh, we build on our situational problems. So we look at teaching them strategies and we give real world examples in order for them to work on solving problems. In addition to uh, the English and math program, we encourage students' independence and responsibility towards their learning. And we also incorporate um, technology in our everyday lessons, uh, which is basic typing and researching skills. Madame Amel? Oui, alors bonjour, mon nom est Amel Adjouj. Euh, J'enseigne la cinquième année, c'est ma, ma troisième année à Dunry Garden. Euh, Ce qui, comme vous avez vu euh, le, dans le, le message de la directrice, nous enseignons euh, l'univers le, social, les sciences euh, en français. Donc, c'est vraiment une richesse supplémentaire pour les, les élèves, plus d'occasion de pratiquer euh, la langue. Et euh, nous insistons surtout au troisième cycle et à partir de la cinquième année, à leur donner des méthodes de travail efficaces, à être beaucoup plus indépendants, à s'investir beaucoup plus dans leurs apprentissages. Alors, ce que je leur dis souvent, c'est que moi, enseignante en classe, je suis un guide, je peux vous conseiller, mais ils sont vraiment au cœur de leur apprentissage. Donc, euh, être capable d'organiser le travail pour la semaine, ils reçoivent un plan de travail en général, euh, vendredi ou lundi matin, et puis ils doivent organiser tout le travail qu'ils ont à faire pour la semaine. Euh, pour ce qui est du, de la langue, euh, c'est surtout aussi leur donner des méthodes de travail euh, au niveau de l'écriture et de la lecture. Comme vous le savez, je pense que c'est euh, euh, mondial au niveau de l'écriture, c'est vraiment des gros défis à relever, en lecture aussi. Donc, on les guide petit à petit à, à adopter un processus d'écriture et puis ils le font très bien. Et c'est surtout aussi leur offrir un environnement euh, sécuritaire. Et puis, euh, nous avons vraiment un esprit de famille. Donc, je pense qu'ils se sentent en sécurité, à l'aise d'exprimer ce qu'ils ressentent. Des fois, ça va, des fois, ça va moins bien. Et euh, je pense que, que c'est ça ce qui compte parce que en leur donnant cette... Euh, Euh, en les rassurant, ils sont capables de produire et nous donner le meilleur de, de ce qu'ils peuvent donner. Donc, ça me ferait un plaisir de répondre à vos questions euh, si vous en avez. Je sais que c'est un cycle important et je sais que beaucoup de parents euh, s'inquiètent un petit peu. Donc, il nous fera plaisir de répondre à toutes vos inquiétudes et vos questions. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Madame Amel. Hey, Madam Fabiana, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to invite now our uh, students to speak to us a little bit about what they uh, enjoy, like about their school. Hello. Hello. Um, so, uh, well, I'm going to start. These are my two friends, Eloise and Max. I'm Oscar. So at Denver Gardens, we have uh, many great teachers. They're animated and understanding, and they really help us throughout the years. We also have a great behavioral technician called Miss Christina, and she helps us deal with bigger problems. So for the polo, my two friends have the shirt polo with the crest, and I have the optional V-neck cardigan. Uh, this year, we added pre-K to our school, and for their safety, their distance from the other grades. Uh, at school, we do a lot of campaigns where we raise funds to do marches. For example, last year we raised six thousand dollars for the Terry Fox Association. Um, I'll let my friend always speak. At our school, we have a wide range of extracurricular activities, such as knitting, sports, karate, and rugby. When I was arrived at Dunray, I knew only one word in French. But now I am perfectly bilingual. At our school, we have a great balance between English and French. From pre-K to grade two, it is all French. And then from grade three to grade six, it is half French, half English. We have a great art program and other courses, ERC, music, phys ed, and art. Um, in music, you learn the flute, Grade three and grade four learn the flute, and grade five and grade six learn the ukulele. Normally, we have great field trips and a leadership camp. The leadership camp, you stay for one night, and it's for grade five and six. 
uh, the field trips are depending on which grade you're in. It depends which field trips you go on. Um, unfortunately, this year we will not be able to do the field trips because of COVID nineteen. Here at Denver Gardens, we are well prepared for high school. I know that because of what this, I know that because of the work that the teachers give us. And I also had a brother who came here. My brother made it into the first high school he applied to and wanted to go to. At Dunmer Gardens, we have a large schoolyard. We have concrete going around the school as well as a huge field. We use this in terms of bubbles this year because of the classes and the safety. For example, our class around the concrete, but there are some other classes on the field. At Dunmer Gardens, I remember making my first few friends on like the second day of school. I still have these friends till this day, and I hope I still have them for the rest of my life. And last, and lastly, the we have a parents committee. This parents committee organizes some really fun fundraisers, such as the Spaghettata, Spaghetti Night, Fun Fair, and much more. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this open house. Thank you to our uh, wonderful uh, students. So those were Cycle 3 students who gave us a very good idea of their experiences in high school, I mean, in, in elementary and moving forward, being prepared to get into high school. Um, now I think I'm going to turn it over uh, to, uh, to see if we have any questions from uh, the public. I, oh, I think I have to stop sharing first. My apologies. Okay, so we have a question coming in in regards to a welcome class, special classes. So do you have such welcome special classes for students who struggle in subjects taught in French? Um, we don't have a welcome class like they do in the French system, but none. usually we have uh, the larger majority who come in with no French. And these kids, like I said, are immersed into the language. So... Um, and they fare well enough, like I said, by January, they're all speaking in French. Um, and even in the later classes, if they start with us a little bit later, usually at the younger levels, kids are able to, um, to keep up with the language and to make sure that they learn it. They're very resilient. So uh, we don't have any specific welcome classes, like I said, but we do immerse the kids to the language and we go according to their, uh, their, their needs. I hope that, that answers the question. And then we also have a question about pre-K. So I guess the question, is, can I know a bit more about, so yes, uh, essentially our pre-K, uh, this is new this year, uh, and uh, it's actually working really, really well. We accept up to 17 students in that classroom. Uh, we only have one pre-K class, and uh, even within that, the students are, uh, they're learning through play. They don't have an evaluation like they do in the other grades, but they're basically they're learning to love school. So they have a lot of uh, structured activities, but as well as a lot of uh, free uh, creative activities. So it's really a question of uh, their growth in, in pre-K and what they're able to do and observations through what it is that they're, they're able to do in, in that class. Uh, so the number of students in class, uh, uh, the average, okay, so Basically, in our classes, we have to follow what the prescribed uh, uh, class load is of uh, the, the ministry. So in the younger grades, uh, for now, I have three kindergartens and we're at 14 students roughly per class, but it all varies per year, but we can have up to 19 in uh, kindergarten, uh, 21 in grade, uh, 22 in grade one, 24 and 26 going up into the upper grade. So that's a, that's our uh, those are our maximum class sizes. Oftentimes we might surpass by one or two, or we may end up having a lot less kids in the class. But essentially, we follow what is uh, prescribed by the the government. We have another question regarding uh, difficulty to register. So how difficult is it for someone outside of TMR to get access to the kindergarten level? Uh, so we do have many schools in the MSB, and everybody, uh, everybody is zoned for a particular school. However, depending on the program that you're looking uh, to receive, 
In our case, it's an immersion program. So if you're looking to have more French uh, in the school, we do have students that are in the surrounding areas of TMR that register to our school. So if there is a space, then the registration uh, happens. We obviously prioritize uh, students who are within our zone first. I hope that answers the question. Uh, that we have another question regarding the number of K classes. Uh, that also depends on the number of registrations. Uh, this year and uh, last year, uh, we've we had uh, three classes. So we have three classes this year, and we also had three classes last year. And I hope to be able to have three classes next year as well. So there's a question on homework. Uh, do you give homework and follow up? Uh, so we have a no homework policy at Dunry Gardens, but what that means, it doesn't mean that children don't have homework. It just means that there's no homework for the sake of homework. There's no uh, projects that students will have to get together outside of school to have to uh, plan with other students. Uh, there is definitely a lot of review. There's a lot of study skills. There's um, uh, evaluations that have to get done. And then there's always practice on what it is that has been started in class. So if they've started a certain topic within the classroom and um, the practice has been given in the class and hasn't been completed, then that will be taken home so that the students can continue it there. We have a question about relocating in the summer. So uh, if I were to relocate in the summer to your zone, do you have a sibling a preference if you have multiple children? My kids are ages six and I'm hoping to keep them together. Well, I'm hoping to accept them all then. <laughs> so just register all three of the siblings. Uh, in cycle two, does the 40% English mean that 40% of their school day will be in English? The way that we divide it here at Dunry Gardens is that we have uh, uh, one day English, one day French, and then the Friday is a half, half day. However, um, it seems like a 50-50 breakdown, uh, but our specialist courses are offered in French. So physical education, art, uh, they're offered in French. So uh, those are extra, that, that's where they get the extra French as well. Um, do we have any, um, any, we don't have any more questions right now. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that usually we would get as a question. Uh, not quite sure. No more questions from the public. Uh, I have something that maybe uh, what schools do kids go to after? So our students are very well prepared uh, for any uh, school that they want to enter. Uh, so we do have our, um, and they end up, so whether they attend one of our schools at, in our school board, what ends up happening there is uh, they end up technically taking an immersion stream or a, a Francais langue d'enseignement stream because they are proficient in both languages. So they end up getting, um, they end up going into something that offers them a little bit more French than just uh, a core. Or, and we do have some students who end up in private French schools as well. We have many students actually who end up uh, there as well. It's just essentially they are proficient in the language and we feel that they're very well prepared to enter high school. Um, another thing that we do have here at Dunray Gardens is uh, culture in the school. So we bring a lot of external artists into our, uh, into our school. Um, and basically these... Um, They'll come in and they'll do, uh, whether it's music, whether it's art. So you saw like the mural that was happening. There was a music class that was happening. So there's a lot. We try to uh, involve our children in as much cultural activities as we can. We also do a lot of, um, our fundraisers also have to do a lot with, uh, you know, our earth and, you know, being mindful of, uh, of, uh, of ourselves and our habits. And uh, so we've had like a walk for uh, the planet, save the whales, uh, uh, the bears, sorry, polar bears. So uh, we try to make sure that our kids get a well-rounded education. And we also expose them to a lot of other things that are not only academics. Uh, 
uh, one of the questions is what is ERC? So basically that's ethics and religious uh, instruction, cultural instruction. And uh, this is offered in all of our classes. In the younger grades in grade one, because it's an exchange of ideas, uh, you know, morals, values, ethics, and so forth, uh, this is something that is offered in the children's uh, mother tongue, let's say. So it's, uh, it's in English, it's offered in English. And in the upper grades, we offer it in French because our students are proficient and are able to express themselves in that language as well. So this is something that's passed by our governing board where our kids follow that program in um, that course in French in the upper cycles, except for cycle one. Uh, another question that we have, uh, are your specialists at school? Do you have separate music teacher arts? So we are very lucky to have a very um, elaborate music program here at Dunry Garden. So kids are exposed to even, you know, they learn to read music, uh, rhythm, sounds, uh, and uh, our music teacher is always off is always filled with new ideas you see her the kids learn to play the ukulele they learn to play the recorder uh they sing uh we have a glee club so the kids really enjoy singing and uh, like you saw the ones those were just the grade six students that um uh, came up with this dunray song so it's their song that they wrote and uh, then composed with the teacher so there's a lot that goes on and as you can see even our art classes we have a separate art teacher who um, has his own locale, except this year for COVID reasons, he enters into the classrooms. But as you can see, there's a lot of elaborate art that is being done in our school. And the kids really get exposed to uh, different artists and really appreciating uh, art. So it's a, it's an added uh, feature that the subjects, these subjects are taught by specialists who know their uh, subject and the kids really end up enjoying it. Um, so we, we do compost as well. So our students learn how to compost from um, uh, as of cycle one. So everything that is, uh, you know, we, we empty the compost at lunch and so forth. So they do uh, learn how to be um, safe uh, with, their, with their planet and, you know, the repercussions that it can have in their future and so forth. Um, there's a question regarding our busing. That usually stays within our territory. It's something that is... Uh, uh, not something we could control. So if somebody comes out of territory, would probably not be eligible for busing. So they would have to be dropped off at the school. Uh, we also do have a resource support and we have a team of specialists in our, um, in our school. So we have a speech and language pathologist who comes in, a psychologist, an, uh, an ASD consultant, which is an autism spectrum disorder, which if ever we did need would come in on a consultative basis. Uh, we have our special ed consultant who also goes into the classrooms, looks at the, the students' needs and helps us to differentiate our instruction within our classes. We meet together to discuss students who might be on an individualized education program. Uh, so, uh, and we try to, uh, you know, put together a plan for them that includes strategies to help them be uh, successful. So we do have that and we do meet often the administration and the uh, it's a multidisciplinary team where we all get together and we discuss the particular students and we make sure that we follow up with them to ensure that we're also uh, respecting their individualized plan that will make them successful. Um, we also get involved with our town a lot and um, uh, and in our community as well. Uh, our parents do help us bring that together as well, but uh, we have uh, students who represent us at the town council. So there are two grade six students. One of the last pictures, I believe in the video that you saw, that was with our mayor. So there's uh, they're in a form of, um, uh, it's an, an assembly, a discussion, and there's uh, many students from the neighboring schools that are um, elected to go and represent their schools. and and come up with uh, ideas that they can uh, improve their um, their neighborhood, basically. Uh, so uh, registration is automatic every year for the students who are already uh, in our school. And But uh, th what we do normally is we send out a letter and if anybody opts not to register, they would just have to advise us. Otherwise, they're automatically registered. And uh, the only registration, the new registrations would be the ones that we have to do it on an annual, obviously, basis. Uh, 
the uh, so there's a question regarding uh, costs of maybe uh, uniforms, meals, and uh, field trips. So this is all depending. Many of our field trips uh, are funded. Last year, we also offset a lot of the costs. We do receive money from the government, uh, you know, through a, a budget called Ecole Inspirante or Culture, whatever it might be. So oftentimes we get a lot of our field trips that are funded, even though we are not uh, an inner city um, school. Um, but uh, we still do receive a lot of funds, so we can offset oftentimes many of our field trips, particularly if they're culturally related. Uh, in terms of the meals, they're reasonably priced. I believe they're uh, about five dollars. Uh, the meal from uh, Miranda, and uh, they're actually really good. They have uh, different options, so you can order for the entire month if you want to. Uh, and there's different selections on a regular basis. So if you don't want to pack a lunch, or if you want to give your child something different uh, in the middle of the week, or whatever it might be, then uh, this is where you would uh, be able to get it from Miranda. Our uniform supplier is Top Marks. They, uh, we've, we used them this year because our uniform supplier last year uh, was no longer available to service us. And Top Marks, uh, it, it's great quality. I mean, even for my own child uh, at uh, her EMSB school, we have, uh, they also use Top Marks and uh, the quality, I mean, she's in grade six now. And uh, luckily she hasn't, she doesn't grow too fast so I can reuse and, <laughs> So, uh, yes, uh, the, the quality is very good and um, and the prices are very reasonable. So if, instead of, you know, purchasing three white shirts, the cost of those three white shirts, you know, you can get one at the cost of two, for example, but you know they're going to last you for a very long time. Um, for uh, ECA, uh, we also offer uh, coding classes, but... Uh, um, and, but we also do this within our classes. And like you saw, younger kids um, playing with little mice. So they were coding at uh, in grade one uh, using something like that. And then you might have seen in the picture in the steam room where kids get to program robots. So all of that has to do with coding. So we do do that early on in a very fun uh, and interactive way. Uh, I missed, I did, I wasn't reading it at the same time that I hope I answered that question in regards to uh, coding. You mentioned that you teach coding. Yes, tells us in which language it is an extracurricular and under which course it is given. It's not, it's integrated. There's no particular course that is called coding in our school, but they're integrated within the classroom. So it can be that the teacher is doing a French lesson, trying to teach them, you know, à gauche, à droite, en avant. Uh, so it can be just as simple as that. And then they can learn to code. Okay, ton robot doit avancer à, uh, en avant. Il doit tourner à gauche, à droite. So it's, uh, it's, it's integrated within the subject. It is not uh, a course offered per se. Uh, what do we have? Uh, so we are in equipped also, I mean, now with this uh, exceptional year, last year we had to go uh, online. So uh, it's asked, you know, if, um, if we're ready, if we would have to do a shutdown and be online. Yes, the, our school is fully uh, prepared to be able to uh, make sure that uh, our students uh, can learn virtually. If ever we did have to close down, we have been uh, very uh, lucky that um, we haven't been affected by COVID thus far. So I have not had to shut down any classes. Children are happy uh, and healthy in our school. And uh, actually it has been a really uh, good experience. We started on edge, but we're doing really well. We're well into December and we haven't had to send anyone home yet. So thank goodness for that. Um, and so a question is transferring in from another school and if it has uh, any, rep I, um, I'll just answer maybe the, the first question, transferring in from another school, if it has any repercussions on the students. Uh, no, we actually have many students who have started, who started even after September, who had started in other schools. And this, I'm not only talking about uh, the younger grades, but even the older ones. And uh, our school is a very inviting environment. Our clientele and our students are fantastic and they're extremely welcoming. So any student that comes in, the kids are always very happy to welcome them. They're always very sad to see the ones that will have to move and end up going. But we even have uh, someone that started in pre-K just two weeks ago. They were lucky enough to have received, gotten the, the last spot. 
and uh, the child has integrated very nicely. The teachers are very helpful and so are the students and so are the, uh, the entire team that works with, um, with our teachers as well. In pre-K, we don't only have the one teacher in there. We also have another uh, second teacher that is there twice a week to assist uh, our teacher. And if ever there's any, um, uh, if, there, if ever there's any um, support that is needed, then we do have our childcare workers in our school that support students with specific needs. And we also have our behavioral tech. Uh, we also do have a resource teacher, which is part of our MDT teams, which I did not mention, which offers additional uh, support to the teacher within the classroom. And what, uh, so there was a question that had popped up, but I don't think I was able to, I didn't answer it. Am I able to see that question again? If not, I'll move on to something else. Okay, so I'll just mention maybe some of the uh, events that happen um, in our school. So uh, our parent community is involved with things like uh, Halloween, pancake breakfast, the welcome back to school events. So there, like I said, uh, we have an extensive parental community that is extremely, extremely supportive. Um, and like I said, it's it's like I ask and I receive. Last year we planned, uh, I shouldn't even say we planned because most of the planning was done by the parents. Uh, and uh, we planned a really wonderful event for our 90th uh uh, celebration. We had the spirit of giving coming in. We have kids who were asked to go on the radio and discuss literacy. Uh, we attended Learning Commons. Uh, we, we we went on a trip with many kids so that they can be exposed to uh, other authors. Um, there's so much, so much that goes on in our school that it's just endless. And I don't know if you want to know anything, uh, anything specific. Uh, we deal with, uh, one of the students had mentioned that we have a wonderful uh, behavioral technician that uh, helps deal with uh, some of the issues that might arise among students and so forth. And uh, I do have to say that uh, this goes along with, you know, things like bullying, et cetera. So these are dealt with immediately. So we do have a bullying policy and uh, we follow it if there are kids that are being affected by others. And so we have a zero tolerance for things like that. Um, and uh, and we do find ways to support the kids and uh, allow them the time to reflect and really think about you know what it is whether it's just a conflict between students and how it is that they can uh, resolve their conflict together. So um, we have no more questions from uh, our social media, and uh, so uh, I guess uh, I'm gonna say. Thank you uh, to all of you for attending our open house. Uh, we do have another session, which is a Zoom session at uh, 2, uh, 2 p.m. this afternoon. I did send the link to those who registered. If you still want to register and attend the 2 p.m. session where we'll have more of a Hollywood Squares uh, uh, setup, then you can uh, go onto our website and register for that session. I'll make sure I'll send you the link. So I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'll say that it's my second year here as principal. And uh, I've obviously I've been with the MSB for 25 years, uh, almost 25 years as a teacher. Uh, I was an administrator in other schools as well, but it was my first principalship and I had heard very, uh, great things about the school myself. And I was really excited to start here. And I can tell you that as my second, you know, into my second year here, it, it is a wonderful experience. It is a great school, a great community, and uh, I encourage you all to uh, register. Registration is in February. Uh, however, uh, it begins uh, February 1st for uh, kindergarten students. If there are any other registrations within the year, then you know that you can contact me directly. Thank you so very much for coming. Uh, even though I can't see all of you, it's always nice to speak to my screen. <laughs> Have a lovely uh, weekend all. Thank you for coming to our open house.